Part of what everybody loves about the A5 is that it is amphibious. So you can take it to a local marina or to a seaplane base with a boat ramp. With that though, there are certain precautions that you have to take when ramping the A5. Peter Night Traffic, Icon 40 Bravo Alpha is taking off from Alpha 2, departing to the south, be landing just south of the marina, five to feet below, Peter Night. We are about to land right outside of the marina, so I'm configuring to land. Power is back, gears up, flaps down, water runners up. We want to make sure that we can touch down and come to idle before we enter the actual marina. The marina has um, idle zones and speed restrictions. So we want to make sure that we are pretty close to idle once we get to that entry point. A little bit of boat wake activity. I'm waiting to touch down just beyond it. Touch down, just coming down, staying on step till I get a little bit closer. So flaps are coming up and I'm putting my water rudder down just to have a little bit more maneuverability. There's no point in having the flaps down when we're maneuvering inside a marina. The winds are pretty light today, um, so that's favorable for us, especially when you're in confined areas like this. And strong winds, enclosed marinas probably aren't um, going to be an option. Uh, but the ramp we're using today is facing easterly. The winds are favoring an easterly direction, so we shouldn't have any controllability issues. But to verify that, before I get too close, I'm actually going to extend my gear and I'm going to do controllability checks left and right and really make sure that I still have full controllability of the aircraft with my gear down. And we're, we're way far out right now, but you want to make sure that you're completely aligned with where your direction of your ramp is going to be before you do your controllability checks. So I'm seeing uh, the ramp straight ahead of us right now. I'm going to extend the landing gear while below four knots ground speed. So gear is down and locked. I have my water rudder down right now and I'm just gonna go full left. Feels good. And now I'm gonna see if I can do full right, full right. Make sure I still have authority to swing the nose back to the opposite direction all the way to the other side. And then I'm gonna go back to the left, make sure I still have controllability. So it looks like I do again, winds are pretty light, nothing too extreme here. I'm gonna go ahead and um, bring my gear back up because we still have a little bit of ways before we get to the ramp. We're going in between these couple boats. We got plenty of room. Again, this is probably not something I would do in strong winds, but with how the winds are right now, I'm feeling pretty confident that I'll be able to control the aircraft and I have plenty of room. So as I get closer, I'm going to start thinking about bringing my gear down, right? It takes about anywhere between 7 and 10 seconds to get a full down and locked indication. So I don't want to wait to the last minute because you also want to make sure you're getting the down and locked. You don't want it to get stuck in transit and then be almost touching the ramp, not having a way out before you realize you have to bail out and recycle your gear. So gear is down and locked. Area looks clear. As soon as I feel the nose touching the ramp, I'm going to increase power and go up. It doesn't have to be full power, but it'll be a decent amount. There it goes, adding power. So power is at idle. My nose is completely centered. I'm heading straight down the ramp and now I'm just going to kind of release the brakes and let the momentum of that ramp, the decline of the ramp, bring me back into the water. So I'm completely buoyant. I can go ahead and bring my gear up. I'm clearing both sides of the docks that were approaching the ramp. So gear's up and locked. I'm going to go ahead and uh, put my water rudder back down. So takeaways with ramping is obviously one, making sure that the, the ramp is wide enough, right? 45 feet wide is really what we're looking for. Our wingspan left and right is 35 feet. So giving us a five foot buffer on either side um, is good. It doesn't necessarily mean that the ramp itself needs to be 45 feet wide, but the clearance 
um, around the ramp needs to be 45 feet wide. So doing controllability checks before you uh, get too close. So if you don't have controllability that you need, you can bail out. Making sure that um, you know your gear is actually down and locked before approaching. Don't let it be in transit before going up a ramp. That could obviously be very bad. If able, bring your water rudder up. Um, sometimes I will keep it down just based on how strong the winds are, if I need more controllability, if I'm approaching a ramp from a crosswind. Um, I'm going to want that extra authority with my water rudder. So coming down from the boat ramp is um, power to idle, no centered, and you're going straight down. You're just releasing the brakes slightly, allowing that momentum to go down the boat ramp and making sure that water rudder is up before you go down. And that's it.